Good afternoon. Today we are reading The Wise Old Woman. Please follow along as I read. You can follow the red line on the side of the text. I will pause now and then to ask you questions. Please write down the answers in your notes. The Wise Old Woman. Many long years ago, there lived an arrogant and cruel young lord who ruled over a small village in the western hills of Japan. I have no use for old people in my village, he said haughtily. They are neither useful nor able to work for a living. I therefore decree that anyone over 71 must be banished from the village and left in the mountains to die. So how does the beginning of this story be resemble or begin like other folk tales you have read? Pause the video and write down your answer. Did you say that it takes place in a distant past? Very good. What a dreadful decree. What a cruel and unreasonable lord we have, the people of the village murmured. But the lord fearfully punished anyone who disobeyed him, and so the villagers who turned 71 were cheerfully carried into the mountains, never to return. Imagine you had to listen and follow this rule. How would you feel? Again, Take a moment and write down your answer. Did you say that you would feel scared, sad, or angry? My guess is many of the villagers felt this way too. You can see this because it says tearfully, like they were crying. Gradually, there were fewer and fewer old people in the village, and soon they disappeared altogether. Then the young lord was pleased. What a fine village of young, healthy, and hard-working people I have, he bragged. Soon it will be the finest village in all of Japan. Now there lived in the village a kind young farmer and his aged mother. They were poor, but the farmer was good to his mother, and the two of them lived happily together. However, as the years went by, the mother grew older and before long, she reached the terrible age of 71. If only I could somehow deceive the cruel Lord, the farmer thought. But there were records in the village books and everyone knew that his mother had turned 71. So here we can see that the young farmer wants to lie to his lord so his mother can stay with him. But because there are records that say his mother's age, he must listen. Each day, the son put off telling his mother that he must take her into the mountains to die. But the people of the village began to talk. The farmer knew that if he did not take his mother away soon, the Lord would send his soldiers and throw them both into a dark dungeon to die a terrible death. So here the son must choose whether to bring his mom into the mountains to die or to both die. Mother, he would begin as he tried to tell her what he must do, but he could not go on. Then one day the mother herself spoke of the Lord's decree. Well, my son, she said, the time has come for you to take me to the mountains. We must hurry before the Lord sends his soldiers for you. And she did not seem worried at all that she must go to the mountains to die. So the mother agrees to go to the mountains in order to protect her son. Forgive me, mother, dear mother, for what I must do, the farmer said sadly. And next morning he lifted his mother to his shoulder and set off on the step path toward the mountains, 
up and up he climbed until the trees clustered close to the path was gone. There was no longer even the sound of birds, and they heard only the soft wail of the wind in the trees. The son walked slowly, for he could not bear to think of leaving his old mother in the mountains. So here we can see the son is very sad. He says that he walks slowly so that it, he can be with his mother longer. So pause for a moment and think, why was that last paragraph the climax? Did you say the young man has to make a decision and he can't turn back? You're right. He has to either take his mom into the forest or go to jail. On and on he climbed, not wanting to stop and leave her behind. Soon, he heard his mother breaking off small twigs from the trees that they passed. Mother, what are you doing? he asked. Do not worry, my son, she answered gently. I am just marking the way so you will not get lost during returning to the village. The sun stopped. Even now you are thinking of me, he asked wonderingly. The mother nodded. Of course, my son, she replied. You will always be in my thoughts. How could it be otherwise? At that, the young farmer could bear it no longer. Mother, I cannot leave you in the mountains to die all alone, he said. We are going home, no matter what the Lord does to punish me. I will never desert you again. So they waited until the sun had set and a lone star crept into the silent sky. Then, in the dark shadows of night, the farmer carried his mother down the hill and they returned quietly to their little house. The farmer dug a deep hole in the floor of his kitchen and made a small room where he could hide his mother. From that day, she spent all her time in the secret room and the farmer carried meals to her there. The rest of the time, he was careful to work in the field and act as though he lived alone. In this way, for almost two years, he kept his mother safely hidden and no one in the village knew that she was there. So now the farmer has decided that it is he cannot leave his mother to die. So he takes her home and she leaves in a secret room in the house. No one knows she is there. Then one day, there was a terrible commotion. Among the villagers, for Lord Higa of the town beyond the hills threatened to conquer their village and make it his own. Only one thing can spare you, Lord Higa announced. Bring me a box containing 1,000 ropes of ash and I will spare your village. The cruel young lord quickly gathered together all the wise men of his village. You are men of wisdom, he said. Surely you can tell me how to meet Lord Higa's demands so our village can be spared. Because another lord wants to conquer the village, the evil young lord needs the help of the wise people. But he has sent all the wise people away. Remember when we talked about irony and how irony is the opposite of what you expect happens? How do you think that this is irony? Did you say that the Lord needs the help of the people who he said were useless? Good job. But the wise men shook their heads. It is impossible even one rope of ash, sir, they answered. How can we ever make 1,000? Fools, the Lord cried angly, angrily. What good is your wisdom if you cannot help me now? And he posted a notice in the village square offering a great reward of gold to any villager 
who could help him save their village. But all the people in the village whispered, Surely it is an impossible thing, for ash crumbles at the touch of the finger. How could anyone ever make a rope of ash? They shook their heads and sighed, Alas, alas! We must be conquered by yet another cruel lord. So the new lord wants them to make ropes of ash. Ash is what's left in the fire after it burns. But this is impossible because when you touch the ash, it crumbles in your fingers. Even the wise people cannot figure out how to do this. And so they are worried that they will have a new cruel lord who will rule them. The young farmer too, supposed that this must be, and he wondered what would happen to his mother even if a new lord, even more terrible than their own, came to rule over them. When his mother saw the troubled look on his face, she asked, What are you so worried, my son? So the farmer told her of the impossible demand made by Lord Higa if the village was to be spared, but his mother did not seem troubled at all. Instead, she laughed softly and said, why, that is not such an impossible task. All one has to do is soak ordinary rope in salt water and dry it well. When it is burned, it will hold its shape, and there is your rope of ash. Tell the vi villagers to hurry and find 1,000 pieces of rope. The farmer shook his head in amazement. Mother, you are wonderfully wise, he said, and he rushed to tell the young lord what he must do. You are wiser than all the wise men of the village, the lord said when he heard the farmer's solution. He rewarded him with many pieces of gold. The thousand ropes of ash were quickly made, and the village was spared. So because of the wise woman's idea about soaking the rope, the young farmer got both gold and he was able to save his village, showing that his mom truly is a wise old woman. In a few days, however, there was another great commotion in the village as Lord Higa sent another threat. This time, he sent a log with a small hole that curved and bent seven times through its length and he demanded that a single piece of silk thread be threaded through the hole. If you cannot perform this task, the Lord threatened, I shall come to conquer your village. Pause for a second and think what will happen here. Would it be possible for you to bring some thread through a curved piece of wood? What do you think will happen? The young lord hurried once more to his wise men, but they all shook their heads in bewilderment. A needle cannot bend its way through such curves, they moaned. Again, we are faced with an impossible demand. And again, you are stupid fools, the lord said, stamping his foot impatiently. He then posted a second notice in the village square, asking the villagers for help. Once more, the young farmer hurried with the problem to his mother in her secret room. Why, that is not so difficult, his mother said with a quick smile. Put some sugar at one end of the hole, then tie an ant to the piece of silk thread, and put it in at the other end. He will weave his way in and out of the curves to get to the sugar, and he will take the silk thread with him. So why do you think the mother finds this task so easy? Please write your answer down on your sheet of paper. Did you say you think it is because she has lived longer? She has more experience than others? Or has faced similar challenges? I think her experiences make her wiser and better able to think of solutions to these challenges.
Mother, you are remarkable, the son cried, and he hurried off to the Lord with the solution to the second problem. Once more, the Lord commended the young farmer and rewarded him with many pieces of gold. You are a brilliant man, and you have saved our village again, he said gratefully. But the Lord's troubles were not over even then. For a few days later, Lord Higa sent another demand. This time you will undoubtedly fail, and then I shall conquer your village. He threatened, bring me a drum that sounds without being beat. But that is not possible, sighed the people of the village. How can anyone make a drum sound without beating it? This time, the wise men held their heads in their hands and moaned. It is hopeless. It is hopeless. This time, Lord Higa will conquer us all. So this challenge is to make a drum that makes noise without touching it. Again, the wise men cannot figure out how to do this. The young farmer hurried home breathlessly. Mother, mother, we must solve another terrible problem or Lord Higa will conquer our village. And he quickly told his mother about the impossible drum. His mother, however, smiled and answered, Why, this is the easiest of them all. Make a drum with sides of paper and put bumblebees inside. As it tries to escape, it will buzz and beat itself against the paper and you will have a drum that sounds without being beaten. The young farmer was amazed at his mother's wisdom. You are far wiser than any of the wise men of the village, he said. And he hurried to tell the young lord how to meet Lord Higa's third demand. When the lord heard the answer, he was greatly impressed. Surely a young man like you cannot be wiser than all my wise men, he said. Tell me honestly, who has helped you solve all these problems? So, in this sentence, the Lord says, Surely a young man like you cannot be wiser than all of my wise men. What do you think the, young, the Lord means by this? What is he admitting? Please write down your answer. Did you write the Lord admits that with age comes wisdom? If a young person cannot be wise, an older person could be wiser? The Lord's statement contradicts what he did before, when he sent all of the old wise people away because they were useful. Now he is admitting that he needs them. The young farmer could not lie. My lord, he began slowly. For the past two years, I have broken the law of the land. I have kept my aged mother hidden beneath the floor of my house. And it is she who solved each of your problems and saved the village from Lord Higa. He trembled as he spoke, for he feared the Lord's displeasure and rage. Surely now the soldiers would be summoned to throw him into the dark dungeon. But when he glanced fearfully at the Lord, he saw that the young ruler was not angry at all. Instead, he was silent and thoughtful, for at last he realized how much wisdom and knowledge old people possess. So here is the climax of the story, because... The old Lord realizes that old people have wisdom and knowledge and are useful. He can't turn back once he has this knowledge, and he must act upon it. Everything up to this point has been proving that what the cruel young Lord has believed was wrong. 
I have been very wrong, he said finally, and I must ask the forgiveness of your mother and of all my people. Never again will I demand that the old people of our village be sent to the mountain to die. Rather, they will be treated with the respect and honor they deserve and share with us the wisdom of their years. And so it was. From that day, the villagers were no longer forced to abandon their parents in the mountains, and the village became once more a happy and cheerful place in which to live. The terrible Lord Higa stopped sending his impossible demands and no longer threatened to conquer them. For he too was impressed. Even in such a small village, there is much wisdom, he declared, and its people should be allowed to live in peace. And that is exactly what the farmer and his mother and all the people of the village did for all the years after. So in the concluding part, the young lord realizes what he did was wrong, and he stops sending people away because he realizes, or he knows, that the village needs the wisdom of the elders in order to be a happy and cheerful place to live. Please make sure that you have written your questions and answers on paper. If you miss them, you can re-watch the video. Okay? Thank you.